What is up YouTube, it's your boy Alex here from Team Generations and today we are here for another Market Watch. So I'm gonna try to do these always on Wednesdays over here. I might change like a thumbnail or whatever here and there, but uh, as always, I'm trying to just be consistent. So we just hit 900 subs, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. But without further ado, let's hop right in. I'm here for cards, you're here for cards, so let's do it. So I wanna start off talking about this guy, Blue Artillery Dragon, Inlet Pulse Dragon. So this is just super value. If you pull this card, again, you only get like five to like seven kind of, or I think eight max, no, not even eight really, triple rares out of a box. And this is needed for two strategies, both for Flagbird as well as for uh, Magnolia. And Magnolia is just a tier one deck. We all know it. The bottom listings over here, if you're looking for a place that of this guy you're looking to pay around sixty dollars with tax so <clears throat> kind of crazy this is such a good card and once it kind of gets bought out like you know i'm not saying this is a bad seller it's 100 but only 52 sales 94 sales like once you get to like the major sellers over here you're definitely looking north of that 15 so you're paying even more than 60 dollars for a play set so absolutely crazy these are the value this is definitely a winner of this set this is such a good card overall and definitely needed in any kind of soichi deck is outside of like maybe uh Zorga. Moving right along then to, I want to talk about another card that is just insane value and just really has kept its price point, has not fallen from that initial week at all, and this is Trick Moon over here. So we see kind of the same thing over here, kind of bottoming out, you know, you're looking to pay $60 for a playset of this. This is actually turning out to be one of the best value cards you could possibly get within this set. I think this is, you know, like uh, kind of like an antagonist clan. Looks like that protag uh, unit, so people kind of like it. On top of that, the deck is just good. Does what it wants to do. Does it very consistently. And we see that it is selling for this price, like constantly, you know, 316, 315. Today is the 16th. So we see that it is selling over here. And I think uh, that market price is pretty much here to stay. I think the meta is kind of figured out. I think that everything is decently good. Like every deck is kind of at like a decent power level. There is no clear cut. This is the best deck of the format. Every Everything is viable and I think this is actually a really good environment to play in so dbt04 thank you very much it is a pretty good set overall moving along to we did get announced another reprint for this set in English so some of these prices might fall but something that I think will be impacted probably the most is this DSR because this DSR is getting another run the other DSR for uh, the Mahar Nirvana is not getting the same reprint it's the uh, cross dress UU whatever you want to call it cross cross ride um, so this guy is getting another reprint, so we might even see this low price go even lower. Uh, I say low price, it's still $130. Save your money, kids. Don't spend it on fancy cardboard. But even still, it's just worth noting that this probably will drop even further. So if you're looking to pick up another copy of this, like me, myself, I might do it. I'm not sure. Uh, definitely wait a little bit to see what that second printing does for the market. See what you can get online, too. Look on eBay, look on Facebook, look in these Vanguardian kind of group pages. People usually sell them for a little bit more of a discount than on these sites because obviously they take uh, TCG Player takes its toll over here to a card that is just not stopping like this card is hot this card has been hot from the get-go these were at like 40 bucks now they're all the way at 85 dollars and they're selling they're selling at 85 dollars we can see that 87 like this card is absolutely insane the, the the sky is the limit for it really i think this definitely is a super waifu card people love their mats for this people love the character in general i think that the deck is really good like i said for trick moon so overall if you're looking to bling this out it is very very expensive uh the ceiling for this guy just keeps on going up see the market price increase week to week so i'm holding mine right now i'm not i'm don't plan on ever selling it but if it gets high enough like maybe i will i don't know so yeah let's move right along we did get the announcement too of dbt05 we got the phantom blaster overlord skill and at the time of recording we didn't get the uh the end skill yet but it's okay i just wanted to see what the uh sp market would kind of turn into the regular base copy of this is about five dollars per copy which is higher than it was it was like only like a dollar or two a couple of weeks ago but this guy over here the base price for it is 55 dollars for just one copy and then we see there's only two listings with four copies total so if you want a play set of this i mean it is getting pretty expensive there's always a shadow paladin tax but this deck obviously was doing nothing in the meta right now uh, i don't think that'll really change too much with overlord maybe i'll eat my words who knows um phantom blaster overlord but Overall, it's just worth noting this kind of skyrocketing and yeah. Yeah, definitely, wow, the market price is $21 and bam, yeah, this went all the way up to 55. And we see that it did get bought out the other day at the uh, at the announcement for that $25 price point, wow. Speaking about it over here too, we do have that Dragonic Overlord SP and it really hasn't done too, too much. Has been like on a steady incline. Uh, as we can see, it did get a copy bought for like $30, but overall, not too bad. This is kind of what we were expecting to see. I think maybe this is contingent on the skill. It has to be a good skill for people to want to like buy it out because otherwise this is one of my personal favorite decks in Overdress right now, but overall people don't really see it as a very strong deck. So I don't think that it's gonna have like a huge clamoring unless that skill does something good. So keep your eyes on this guy. All right, moving right along to another card. The SP is expensive, that's a given. 
but this guy is the hollow. This actually went way up after the announcement. So let's see, all these guys got bought out. 312, 35, yeah, $10 a copy. People are buying it at this price point. And the hollow version of Blaster Dark was always expensive, but this is really crazy. For a hollow, I think this is the most we've ever seen outside of like an over trigger or something for a hollow. So very, very expensive. Uh, kind of crazy movement here. Only four listings. What is that? Six, eight copies total. So only two play sets available on the market, which is pretty insane going into it over here too i just want to talk about the promos how they are still high if you pull these you have good value you know you just made your money back a playset of this uh Malkarite. even the base rarity is you know a hundred dollars like i don't think this is okay i think these definitely need a reprint i hope they come out in the festival collection they make like an amendment saying they're gonna you know make actual reprints but uh overall very very expensive and if you are pulling these promo cards it is big value the other promo cards in the set didn't really equate to that same thing over here you know we got the dragon empire one what else was it uh there was there was a bermuda one i know and there was also i mean there's one for everybody but overall these are the two winners two really great decks in the meta probably two of the best decks right now kind of at that same tier level um and it just shows you know it's a sad uh sad day but that is what it is and then of course my weekly rant about me bitching about the over trigger and how it is still really expensive and just prohibitive to new players in the game again old players collecting value in sets or whatever i don't know who that invests in vanguard kind of like that but i guess people do they want this value so 20 dollars still for uh let's click into it let's see how many there are 20 dollars for this guy and it's selling around that price point too which is really sad so yeah if you want an over trigger you're looking north of 20 dollars just about there's one left at that 21 dollar uh price range which is insane the other two seem to uh for the brand gate and Ketter Sanctuaries seem to, yeah, kind of stable out at that $14 price range and $16. Very unfortunate. Again, premium season's coming up over here. Uh, obviously, um, BR, uh, not BRO, oh god, Spring Fest is coming as well, and people are gearing up for that, collecting their cards. So, uh, just, you know, like I said, it sucks that it is that prohibitive to a new player to kind of come into the game, boom, put the deck together. It's only like $20, $30, all of a sudden, boom, I add on my triggers, I add on my over trigger, I add on my PGs. And boom, my deck just became $40 more expensive for the quote-unquote non-sexy card. So that is just my two cents. And moving right along, we're going to go into V now. There's actually been a lot of movement in V. Some interesting changes I have noticed. So first off, I want to start with Steam Maiden Allure. This is just the base version that came out in the trial deck for Chrono Jet. So I guess copies aren't very abundant, period. It wasn't an expensive trial deck or anything, but you're looking at the playset you're looking for ten dollars for this and you need this for the steam maidens that just came out because she is the starter for that four attack on one rear guard column kind of combo you start with this grade zero with steam maiden in its name and you work your way up all the way to a grade three so just be aware of that this did get bought out there is like that purple version of this card that i have actually there is sps for this too but the base rarity is getting bought out and people do want like steam maidens it is actually a decent deck i definitely suggest checking it out and there's been a lot of talk too about chrono jet being like a top tier meta deck now that luar's kind of gone uh i think it's been not overhyped but i think it definitely is a little bit of hype and i think the market kind of sees that accordingly like people are buying it like somebody bought two of these for 35 dollars. that's insane to me uh on top of that too like we see copies here for like 18 dollars, 17 dollars. there's a lot of hype when the ban list kind of came out people might have jumped on it but i think this is going to settle back into that like 16 18 range over here i think this is about normal so don't go crazy don't break yourself uh just trying to get a chrono jet jack deck it is good it's always been good i think it's always been solid but um is it worth 35 dollars no uh, I'm, i would say wait do not pay that amount so sorry if you're the one who bought it <laughs> next up over here we're gonna be talking about white lily musketeer cecilia so cecilia reverse is actually a very good deck but overall we're not seeing too many results yet it is a little bit complicated to pilot on top of that some things situationally have to be there uh, i personally have not built this deck so i can't speak from experience but i think it is decent overall i was getting explained to by one of the players at my shop uh, who's actually a really really good player he told me all the combos with this and it seems pretty insane but I don't think a lot of people are kind of buying, I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I think somebody bought this out at that $35 price range and they're paying a lot for it. All of a sudden, people saw that, maybe posted their copies, a little bit more of a motivated seller, random stuff, this and that, you know. People who don't sell typically, I guess, show so much. They started putting their cheaper copies on. So I think we might see this price go down by just a little bit. Like the line really is around that $20 price range as opposed to, you know, $35 that we might've seen, but it is still lower than its market price. So. Just be aware if you are looking to pick this up maybe you can get a good deal on it now while things kind of are trending down for it completely up to you again this is just the base rarity which a lot of people want the higher rarity version of cecilia and i totally get it 
Moving along to, uh, I called it last week. I said that this is going to be a very good deck. And then in Japan, of all the places, I guess, people picked up on that. They they played like a WGP or something like that, or a VGCS. I forgot what it was, but I saw in the top four, there was two Fenrir decks. There was 20-something players only, but even still, I think Fenrir actually is a really good deck. Now, the generic support for Witches, I mean, uh, for Genesis is so good, so defensively bulky that you can get like a really nice pressure control with this card and still be really decent. And I saw there's a little bit of talk, I think, on like, Vanguardians, though somebody was looking to pick these up or something. So, uh, if you're looking to pick up the SP version, it is $49. There's only three copies there, and we see that they did get bought out um, from the other day. Yeah, I was saying this, there was only one copy the other day, and it did get bought out. So, the market price is $13.50, well exceeds that. So, welcome to Fenrir. <laughs> Next up over here, too, we did get new support for Murakumo in the form of Hyaki Vogue Reverse. I actually do have a premium budget deck kind of coming out. I will quote unquote say it's budget just because this card randomly started spiking. Um, I think people are underappreciating this deck. I don't think it's slept on. I don't think that's the right word, but this deck could actually have very, very explosive turns. And it's kind of like a, a Hugo Light in a way, a little bit more fair, but you still can have a very aggressive grade three turn that's not locked behind your opponent having a, a grade three Vanguard. And I think that you can blow and blast people out of the water um, very, very quickly with this deck overall. So. I think the market price kind of reflects that. People are buying it out at that $6, $5 kind of price range. We see that if you want to pick up a play set for this, it's about $24. Uh, I really wish they were a couple dollars because I want to build, I have this built out for a premium. I want to build it for a V again to just have the deck on the side, but I have so many Murakumo decks that I just don't have like that many spares. So I think I'm just going to keep it. Uh, I have like one or two copies in one deck. I have uh, my premium deck kind of built out with this, but this is a card to recognize and it is a little bit above its market price over here and just trending upwards. I think people are kind of disrespecting this deck in a way. Next up over here too, with the void of maybe Prism going, not going away, but taking a step back, I think people are really just underrating. They've underrated Highlander for so long, especially in standard. Like it's still a really, I mean, V premium. Uh, it's still a really, really good deck. Like I still think it's very powerful and it just won some vision tournament over the weekend. There was two Highlanders actually in the top four and the lists are, you know, pretty much the same. This is a very powerful deck. It can just, again, blitz you out out of nowhere they can they have so many different options and plays you don't know what to remove from them sometimes and these cards over here like they have not moved um i mean they actually have moved people are buying these for 124 dollars 89 dollars 90 dollars like and we see this in late march this card this is the market price for it so very very expensive card also the laura too she's very expensive and needed in that uh, highlander build so maybe a reprint on this would be really really nice i feel bad if you know they reprint it and then these guys get you know shafted but at the same time too i think that a lot of people have the most cards for a highlander deck just missing like one or two and it would be cool to play it i personally am kind of in that boat but um yeah Moving on then, I'm going to talk about some of the promo cards here. Two cards you want to be looking at are these guys, actually right up top, and of course, they are sorted to the top on the relevance. This guy over here is really good for Hiyaki Vogue, um, just basically recycles Hiyaki into your deck, becomes a booster, takes that name too, so does everything the deck wants to do overall. And then on top of that, let's go back, I know there's no picture of it, but it's like a grade 2 promo. Uh, where is it? Let's go back to, whoops, relevance here. And then Mega Rock Giant, which you get, uh, Gigant or whatever. This guy is basically what you you absolutely need this card in Amon just to survive a little bit longer. I feel like Amon, you can run the um, draw PGs, but you could also run the crits. And if you run the crits, you probably will not deck out as quickly. And as such, like this guy is basically like a, a perfect card. So I could see this. I mean, I know it's at 50 cents right here. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of copies on the market in general, but. You know, if they wanted to, they could make this a little bit higher. They could bring this up to that dollar price range. So get your copies while they're still super cheap. That is my word of advice. This is the big value pickup, I guess, of the week. Plenty of cards on the market, but this is a... Amon is a very decent deck overall. I think... I don't know if it's top tier right now. I just have to play a little bit more. I have to see the meta, but I've done quite a few test games against it, and it can get powerful. can get out of hand, and this card just really helps it survive to that point where it really needs to be at. Next up here too, I want to talk about Spike Brothers because in premium, um, I built this deck recently actually too. Uh, I don't know that I'm bringing it to the channel anytime soon. I think there's better Spike Brothers players than me, so I don't feel comfortable really doing the premium build on this, but I'm trying this out. This is with the multi-attack greed on Spike Brothers combo. Powerback Ronaldo, while it's not very much higher than its market price, we see that it is selling a couple copies. People are kind of on the hype train for this over here. And if you want a play set of this or a couple different copies, like you're going to be looking to pay over like $10 now. So it is slowly creeping up. Get your copies while you still can at this lower price point, because, you know, at a certain point, it will be $5 for this card. This card has no other printings. Um, definitely necessary for that multi-attack combo. Uh, I personally believe that build is a little bit better. And I also want to talk about Bull Spike. Bull Spike just kind of jumped up as well. 
the market price is $7. All of a sudden, I guess people just decided, hey, look, we're not gonna sell this car for cheap anymore. And they went all the way up to around that $15, $15 mark. So I don't know, is there some bull spike thing that I am missing? I think Spikes has always been a decent deck. Uh, I personally hate playing against this card. I like absolutely hate it. I hate this variant of Spike Brothers. So maybe it is better than people are perceiving and maybe some players have caught on to that. And yeah, we're seeing the price kind of jump up as a result. And then let's just walk through. I haven't really walked through this before. So let me just walk through it with you guys. Now, these are the two latest sets to come out. So reverse kind of dropped in price. I think this was a little bit more expensive. Yeah, people, no, it's actually did jump up a little bit. So look at that. So decent value on this over here. This is kind of the price point where I was expecting. Um, nothing too crazy there. Let's see. Uh, let's go high to low here again. Ezel Scissors, 120. It's pretty much staying the same. Anything else? Those were the two BSRs out of here. Raging, uh, Raging Falls kind of falling. <laughs> no pun intended. Cecilia reverses again, kind of falling. I think people are really hyped for the deck and just saw one of the greatest ever. And again, these reverse, um, these reverse printings of the SPs are absolutely bonkers. Like they look so so nice. Definitely check them out in person if you can. And I think there's actually a pretty good value on most of these. What else is a decent value? Yeah, the Revengers are still holding where they kind of were. The, the boss unit for that too. As well, scissors still five bucks. Yeah. Uh, I was unfortunate enough to pull in a Polaris SP, so I think that about does it for this set. Let's check it out. Oh, whoops, let's not do that. Let's go into Volume 4 now. I know, we just looked at Volume 4, right? Now, let's go to Volume 3. Okay, so yeah, wow, Luke here. So we saw it like came into like the $300 range. Yeah, people bought them at that $300 range right there, but I think it's kind of stabling out at that 289. I could see this, she is just like waifu numero uno. People really love this card and it's a good strategy. Is it like the most competitive right now? Probably not, but at the same time too, this is an awesome purple border print. I don't think we've really had that before. Um, I think, what was it? Did the Chrono Jet kind of have some like weird printing? I think his borders might've been purple on that. I think that was the only time we really received anything like that, but that is huge. And then, Sol uh, how do you say this? Salom, Salome. She is decently expensive too. I think this was a little bit cheaper. Let's look at the full view sales history here. Yeah, this was a little bit cheaper the last time we kind of reviewed it. And it is just going up in price. Jewel Knights is a good deck. It is uh, definitely gonna get your results. And on top of that, like this is the chase card. Kind of of the set, it's good, or it's actually playable. I don't know if it's good or not in premium. I have not seen it in premium personally, so I can't really talk about that. But yeah, 214, uh, I could see this price kind of holding. I don't think it's gonna go much past that. I don't think. People really think it will either. So overall, the Jewel Knights have a lot of value. Like they're, they're just really good. They're a huge engine for the plan. And if you don't have your playset, it might be time to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching so far. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. If you think I missed anything, definitely let me know. And if you enjoy the content, make sure to leave that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Definitely appreciate it. Trying to hit that 1K mark. Definitely appreciate it. So thank you again. This is Alex from Team Generations signing out.